Last Boy Scout was released in 1991, was directed by Tony Scott and it stars Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans, Taylor Negron, Noble Willingham, Chelsea Field and Daniel Harris. This classic 1991 tale tells the story of Joe Hallenbeck, played by Bruce Willis, an ex-secret service agent turned private eye, who has hit rock bottom. We also see Jimmy Dix, played by Damon Wayans, a former pro football player who was kicked out of the league for gambling and drug abuse. What links these two guys together is Corey, played by Halle Berry in one of her earlier roles, as a stripper who hires Helen Beck because she's been threatened by someone and is actually the girlfriend of Jimmy Dix. But when she is brutally murdered, Helen Beck and Dix investigate her murder and discover a sinister plot involving corruption in the world of professional sports. As always guys, thanks for supporting this channel. Please keep on supporting it. If you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button so you can follow this channel. Hit that alarm bell as well so you can get notifications from me when my video is gonna be uploaded. Give this video a like as well and share this video to help the channel grow. The Last Boy Scout was one of my favorite films from the 90s. And watch this, huh? Old school, old school. And I've got it on DVD as well. It's me and Joe Cobo, we used to watch this film and rinse it time and time again. The testament to a classic is when a movie's got so many good scenes, a good plot and so many quotable lines. And The Last Boy Scout has that. The real star of The Last Boy Scout is the script, written by Shane Black. Shane Black wrote the first Leaf Weapon film and he is a master of one-liners and buddy-buddy cop films. His writing is so rich and he's written some of the best films around, some of my favorites, including Leaf Weapon, he wrote Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, he wrote Long Kiss Goodnight, and he wrote The Nice Guys. This film had some notable moments, namely the script. Shane Black was paid 1.7 million for the script, which was one of the highest prices ever paid for a script at that time. But despite this being such a good film, it did have its production problems. Damon Wayans and Bruce Willis have brilliant on-screen chemistry together. These two actually worked together on a sequel to Look Who's Talking. But despite having such great on-screen chemistry and being nominated for an MTV Movie Award for Best Duo, the two hated each other. Bruce Willis, Joel Silver and Tony Scott, they all butted heads on this production. And because of the relationship between Bruce Willis and Joel Silver at that time, they hated each other and didn't get on so well. That was what caused their friendship to break and that was the reason why Joel Silver didn't work on Die Hard with a Vengeance. Tony Scott hated working with Joel Silver so much that a few years later when he directed True Romance, the sleazy producer was actually based upon Joel Silver. Joel Silver actually wanted The Last Boy Scout to be a third Die Hard film. And when you watch it, it could easily be a Die Hard film. Michael Kamen, who did the musical score for Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, also did the musical score for The Last Boy Scout. And when you listen to it, you will hear similarities between Die Hard and Last Boy Scout. But Bruce Willis at the time said, you know what? I don't want to be doing this type of role all over again. And the original script called for a rescuing of his wife. And he said, you know what, I've done that too many times. Let's do something fresh. The Last Boy Scout is just a thrill ride from start to finish. This is one of Tony Scott's best films. And it's a shame that when you think of Tony Scott's filmography, when you think about True Romance, Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop 2, Deja Vu, Crimson Tide, Enemy of the State, the Last Boy Scout isn't up there in that category because it is easily one of his most entertaining and most enjoyable films. This is also one of Bruce Willis's best performances. And this film resurrected his career after the appalling Hudson Hawk and it catapulted him back to the list of hardcore action stars. This is a thoroughly entertaining film and it represents everything that I loved about films that were made in the early 90s. Hardcore action, great plot, great on-screen chemistry, great writing, relaxation on the visual effects and more practical stunts. And you see that within this film. And whilst it is billed as a comedy, I'd say it borders more on an action adventure than a comedy. But this film has so many one-liners to keep the film moving smoothly. The characterization of this film is just excellent. Bruce Willis was fantastic as Joe Hallenbeck. And he delivers the one-liners like nobody's business. And Bruce Willis has always been a cocky, cheeky, but charismatic actor ever since his days on Moonlighting and he knows how to deliver the one-liners. He and Arnie, they can do it like nobody else. But with this film and with Shane Black's writing, Bruce takes it to another level. The same with Damon Wayans. He is equally as charismatic as Bruce Willis. 
he shows that he was a good actor and we see that he can actually deliver a dramatic performance as well. Especially when he's talking about his late son Alex and when Joe catches Demi trying to snort coke in his bathroom and when Joe punches him, Damon gives a brilliant monologue about how far his life has fallen. Taylor Negron as Milo. Wow. A fantastic villain. And Taylor Negron actually started off as a comedian. But as the polite but psychopathic Milo, he was fantastic and chewed up and incinerated every scene that he was in. And he was furiously foul mouthed but also furiously funny. Noble Willingham, the famous Texan actor who plays Shelley Marcone. Joe, you are one dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> I love that guy. And whilst he didn't play a prominent role in the film, he was more in the background, he was equally as entertaining and gave a commanding performance as always. As did Chelsea Fields as Joe's long suffering wife and Danielle Harris as his foul mouthed daughter Darian. My word. And for a young actress to demonstrate that level of maturity and to give that level of intensity, I thought it was a testament to her. Tony Scott is a brilliant director and he keeps the action and the plot moving at a frantic and fast pace. There are some brilliant action sequences in this film. From some brilliant car chases to some shootouts and The Last Boy Scout was one of the first American films to incorporate two-handed gunplay that had been made so popular by the Hong Kong action movie market and in particular by John Woo. And Tony Scott keeps the action to a high level. We see a henchman get the living daylight shot out of him and then he falls onto a helicopter blade and gets the shit cut out of him. Brilliant. Brilliant, hardcore, enjoyable shit. This is what we all grew up on in the 90s. And it's a shame that we don't get to see this style of action anymore. Tony Scott did one particular action sequence in this film where we see the murder of Corey and Jimmy drives the car into one of the henchmen's legs, crushing it. And then Joe blows the back of the henchman's head off a few seconds later. And Tony Scott would do that exact same sequence 15 years later with Deja Vu, where Paula Patton drives a truck into Jim Cazivo's legs and Denzel shoots Jim Cazivo. The Last Boy Scout does have one plot hole where the guy that's quoted as the Scrabble Man, we don't know who these henchmen are, how they know Joe. So that was one plot hole, but it flows. And of the films that were made in the 90s by Bruce Willis, this is by far one of his best. Tony Scott and Shane Black both concurred when they said that the script that was written was far better than the film that was made. But I personally think that the film is just a fantastic watch from start to finish. We have seen a resurgence of this hardcore style of action with the John Wick films, with Extraction that starred Chris Hemsworth, and the legacy of this film is that 30 years on, The Last Boy Scout still holds its own. But we sadly lost some of the participants in that film. Tony Scott, Taylor Negron, Noble Willingham, and even at the ending, when Joe says, I'm thinking I might need a partner. That could have been an indication of a sequel, but would it have been able to hold up to the original? Would never have known. This is one film that I never get tired of watching and that I can watch time and time again. This is a film that I'll give a very strong nine out of 10 to. So guys, that's my review. As always, thanks for watching. Keep on watching because there'll be more retro reviews coming. I'm gonna be doing something with Joe Cobra soon. Hit that subscribe button so you can follow this channel. Hit that alarm bell as well so you can get notifications from me when my video is going to be uploaded. Help give this video a like as well. Leave your comment with whether you've seen The Last Boy Scout and what is your favourite scene from that film. Comment down below and I shall see you all on the next film review. Take care.